yeah, so I'm just going to whiz through this and and just talk about TV and radio. And I thought I was trying to run in work in, in a way of saying friend or foe because TV and radio can work for you or against you. And just a quick overview of my experiences. And I worked as a media and communications advisor for a member of the European Parliament. I was also the campaigns manager on the People's Vote campaign, which is basically trying to get another public vote on Brexit. And I was advocacy and communications lead for the Muslim Charities Forum, which is a network of British Muslim charities. And alhamdulillah, subhanAllah, you know what I mean? Some of the research that we've done and showed that in Ramadan 2018, British Muslims donated 130 million pounds just in Ramadan 2018. And over 2018, roughly 450 million pounds were donated to British Muslim charities. And so subhanAllah, I was a spokesperson for, for the entire Muslim charity sector, as well as leading the government relations, so lobbying government. And currently I am in a communications role in local government. And Alhamdulillah, it's, it's still exciting. I, my Yesterday I was fighting the times and then earlier on in the week I was dealing with some, with some stuff around coronavirus. So I sat on an advisory group on the London wide and coronavirus what's well, called test track and trace communications and engagement campaign. So I sit advising on how to communicate with diverse communities. And I thought I would just show a couple of examples. This was me, I think the most tired looking and it was the end of seven to nine interviews and that night and so I'm that was the BBC and I've got a few other ones. I couldn't find a screenshot of me on Sky News, but I, will, I hope this will you know, be suffice for most people. This was outside the Emirates Stadium with the BBC. And this was on the right was an outside Labour Party conference. And it was, a, uh, I think it was an Austrian um, media and called ORF. And that's basically a snapshot. Is, I've, I've missed out a lot of stuff, but I thought I'll show you a quick snapshot of the national and international media that I've done. And so, alhamdulillah. And I'm just going to get stuck straight into it and ask people why. People, subhanAllah, are, have very good intentions and, and come up with some great initiatives. But why did you do it? What was the need to do it? And more importantly, why do you think people want to hear about it? That sounds very critical, but I, I ask people to be very self-critical in, in the beginning and, and, and self-interrogate themselves before, because that will lead you to become quite self-assured. Um, and you need to know what you're planning on doing. Um, and so why is the most important thing? But the other things are also important. The who, the what, the where, the when, the how. But at the end of the day, why is so important? Why did you do it? So if you say, I launched, I launched someone academics, why? Because this is that, why? So we can, and then, and subhanAllah, then once you, you're sure of that, and you're able to articulate that to yourself, then well, you'll be able to articulate that to other people. And don't let other people, and now I'm doing this as a very internal exercise, so you're ready, so you're self-assured. Because if you're not sure about why you've done something, and you try and sell the idea to someone else, well, I believe they will shatter you. So that's why I say to people, have that conversation with yourself initially, before you go out and try and, and sell or pitch your idea. Um, so what I've seen is, over my many years, um, in kind of working in media and comms, was that people tend to go on TV and radio for three main or three large areas. One is about raising awareness. So you will just go on, you'll be interviewed just to talk, maybe if you work in international development, as I have to say, you know, Yemen is the largest humanitarian crisis. You're not asking anyone to do anything, you're just saying that, you're just saying, did you know? And you're just raising awareness about something that may not have much attention on it. There may be a fun reason. So you may say, you know, um, maternal and mortality in Somalia is one of the worst in the world. And that's why we launched this campaign so that we can provide some money and this and that. And it's at the end of the day, it's, you know, so you're going on there to try and elicit some donations and some funding. And thirdly, it's around advocacy. You're trying to get people to do an action. So whether it's writing to their local politician or, um, and or getting them to sign a petition or something like that. So it's about getting them to do an action. And so let's say you've got a very good idea and now you want to get onto TV or radio or even print. And I'm not focusing much on print on, in my presentation. And what makes it stand out? Because if it doesn't stand out, and I, like I said, I, the, the example I use uh, when I do other media training is to say, I set up a lemonade stand and I won CNN to cover it. CNN will not be covering that. Do you know what I mean? So what makes it stand out? What was unique about it? Another thing that you need to bear in mind, is it timely? We're in June. 
no one should be talking to journalists about Christmas whatsoever. Do you know what I mean? Because people, do, the journalists would just not have time for it. So is it timely? And finally, does it have wide appeal? So what I mean by that is, is it a very niche subject that has to, like the, the audience for that would be some very niche audience, or is it, some things, or is it themes that people can kind of latch onto? Is there, you know what I mean? I, I don't have to be, I don't know, an owner of a cat to enjoy, you know, a, a nice cat story, for example. So does it have wide appeal that people can latch onto? And I thought, you know, an example of that is I'm currently, um, voluntary i'm the national media spokesperson for this campaign and it's called covid19 campaign for national solidarity and which was basically um 30 organizations across the uk muslim organizations have come together to do a a, a campaign and kind of pull resources pull and funding and, and and the like and subhanallah when i when i got the so I, i'm not involved i'm only a media spokesperson so whenever the bbc or someone wants to interview them i you know, i mean they kind of send it over to to me i but i looked over their press release and subhanallah their press release the reason it was and they weren't selling their good points and i just said have you ever done this these things before this this thing before and they were like no so that's your hook first of its kind is well i by the way i led with the the press release and things like that so always even if you've got a project what makes you stand out yes this is an amazing project mashallah it's an amazing initiative but again sell your what makes you stand out from other people as I was going to say the word Mado. As, as non-white people, we understand that we have to kind of work twice as hard as people. And, and so it's in within us to kind of sell ourselves as best as we can because competition is very fierce. So trust me, getting space on TV, on radio is, 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 is a premium. So you need to make sure that you get on there. And the way you do that is by selling yourself up. And the next point I want to touch upon is, you know, mashallah, you know what you're planning to do. And, and so you've got a good initiative and it's timely it makes you stand out and the like and now you need to identify what platform you want to use and um, people think tv and radio are gold they're not and i think you need to be very targeted in what you want to do so for example if i was to do a campaign trying to target young people i have n I, I don't think it's very beneficial for me to be writing a little piece in my local newspaper i think it's better that i use social media and However, I also ask people to be very realistic and, and understand how likely it is that you will be able to access something. So for example, if you're able to, you know, you know some, a, a radio producer personally, it's much more likely that you will get onto that radio show than getting a piece, for example, in print media or in The Guardian. So understand your audience and who you're trying to target and also be realistic about what, you, what, what platforms you'll be able to touch upon and I quickly just wanted to say something subhanallah do you know how many things have started on social media that have become national news or international news so don't feel like you're doing one thing at the expense sometimes I know the the person who books interview guests for channel 4 news is a Muslim sister and she said well like she goes on Twitter to see what's popping and this and that and then she just starts DMing people to say can you come on to channel 4 news so sometimes these things are not mutually exclusive. So even if you've done radio, it doesn't mean that TV is out of the equation or print media. So just sometimes go with one and other people, and then sometimes you may be ending up on other platforms as well. So considerations, and once you have decided what platform you want to go on and, and you have access to platform, is what key message am I trying to send? And what key message am I trying to give? Simply what are you trying to say? Who are my audience? Like I said, I unfortunately, I've been in the Daily Mail previously and Daily Mail are very oppositional to black people, Muslims, people from immigrant background. But another audience may be, you know, Universal TV may be interviewing you. And mashallah, it's a Somali, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a Somali media. So they're going to be much more supportive of your aim. So understand who your audience are. And finally, how long do I have? Most interviews are only a few minutes. I'm sure Asabu will cover this. Every second counts. So. You need to really deliver your, your, your key message, which I'm about to come on to. But I want to share this very famous quote that and I, is, I think is the best quote that I've come across around media and PR, which is from Henry Kissinger, who said, does anyone have any questions for my answers? Does anyone have any questions for my answers? And what does he mean by that? Before he's even had the interview, well, like he knew what he was going to say already. And, you, and that's where you, you need to be in a position that wherever you go, you know already before the interview has begun what you're going to say. And that's why I was, thought I'd share some quick tips. And if there's one thing, and there's something called a takeaway, if there's a takeaway from my presentation today, 
Wallahi, it is this slide. Prepare your key message. What do I want people to remember from what I said? Because you can speak for five minutes of this and that, but what is one thing that people will remember from what you said? And that's what a key message is. And how do you do it? You sum up everything that you want to say, your entire project, this and that, and you sum it up in one or two sentences. And it is a skill, by the way. You have to be able to condense it into a very short one or two sentences. So an example from my work and trying to stop Brexit, subhanAllah, um, was Brexit has turned into a mess that nobody voted for, and it's only going to get worse. The politicians can't sort it, only the people can. And that was my key message. But the wider message, so you've got a key message and you've got something called a core message, which is a paragraph. But basically this came at a time when Brexit was going really, like, really mad and the politicians were trying to vote for different versions of Brexit and no version of Brexit had a majority. So they were stuck in gridlock. No, no one thing had won. So that's where the politicians can't sort it out. And I was advocating for a new referendum, which is where the line, only the people can. So you have a key, and that just summed up everything I was trying to say. A few other examples I'm sure will be very familiar to UK audiences, maybe in, in international as well, is some of these are slogans, but they double up as, a, as key messages as well. For the many, not the few. Get Brexit done. Make America great again. Take back control. Strong and stable. These lines, Wallahi Blay, will be featured in every single interview, every single speech, every single article. These are their key lines and these are key messages. And you know what people are trying to say when they're saying these phrases. Tip two, prepare other talking points. You cannot carry a TV or even a radio interview just by repeating the same thing again and again and again. Trust me, well, no, I was gonna say I've tried it. I haven't tried it, but I've tried to do most of my interview doing the same key message. It just doesn't work. So you have to have other talking points and think, how can I get my message across more strongly? What am I trying to say, which was remember the key message and how can I get that across more strongly? And a simple way of doing this is memorize rebuttals, sound bites, and supporting facts and stats. An example I've got here is Black Lives Matter. So for example, if I was to be interviewed about Black Lives Matter now, I know 100% I'll be asked, wherever I am in the world, I'll be asked about violence on your side of the argument and you guys are looting and you guys are doing this. So a rebuttal would be, you know, let's just say a police officer got injured. You know what I mean? I would say, you know, I, it's very unfortunate a police officer got injured. But did you know that 17 black young men and women were injured as well so why are we not talking about that i am unfortunate that so you rebut that and come with them and sometimes you need to be prepared to don't go into a defensive mode but go into a very offensive mode and just say actually rebut what they're trying to say of just saying you know there's only there was only violence on your side and this and there's actually violence perpetrated against and um, the innocent people that were protesting as well and uh, sound bites one one that i used last week was um shops and stocks are replaceable lives are not and that just stuck with someone do you know what i mean and they sent me this fire emoji and i just said shops and stocks are replaceable lives are not and i think that just kind of tells you what it is and it will stick in people's minds and then supporting facts and stats you've said black lives don't matter you've given us anecdotal evidence but what other evidence do you have and so that's where you bring in and some you know stats and facts that can support what you're trying to say so one thing i've come across is in the u.s black men on average will have 20% longer jail sentences than white men for doing the exact same crime. You can go research that. So that's, you know what I mean? So when you're talking about black lives not mattering, that is an example. When you're talking about injustice against black people, that's, do you know what I mean? And it just reinforces what you're trying to say of black lives not mattering. So in terms of communicating, I thought I would just share this and these figures vary slightly, but they're more or less in the same, this is the ballpark, which is body language about 55%, and tone is 38% and verbal 7%, which is why my next tip will focus on how you look. My dear respected brothers and sisters, please maintain eye contact because if you don't, even if you're nervous or things like that, it just comes across as you look, you're looking very shifty and very shady and that you're lying. So maintain eye contact at all times. You are, it's a performance, lights are on this and that. So there's no need for you to be looking around and seeing what's going on left, right, and center. And for the sisters, if you're wearing a hijab, make sure it's a light color as the dark colors will kind of drain color from your face. Pastel colors are your best friend and it's best to avoid overt patterns because that's going to be very distracting. Men, there's similar advice for similar reasons. Wear a white or a light colored shirt. And if you're wearing a suit, navy blue suits are ideal. And hands, I suffer with this and I've had many mentors and managers try to beat this out of me literally and I still haven't managed to do it. But now, they're not within the shot of camera. So they can be distracting. If you're talking with your hands, they can be very distracting. So just try and let your mouth do the talking, inshallah.
um, tip four. So that was very TV focused. This can be TV and more radio. Language. Use easy to understand language and avoid, you know, complex words and jargon. If you're a doctor, you have no reason to be using the phrase myocardial infarction when you could say heart attack. You have no reason to be saying pneumothorax when you could be saying collapse the lung. So just understand the audience you have and kind of speak to them in a way that they will understand as well. And for the love of God, please do not swear because when you do swear, especially before nine o'clock, the journalist is duty bound to have to issue an apology to viewers. You've completely lost your message because the only thing people remember is that you swore. Tone, being monotonous means you lose the audience. And more so, I didn't even write it here, but well, I believe it looks like you're very disinterested. How are you there promoting a very good initiative and cause? And it doesn't even look like you want to be there. So be passionate. I'd be expressive, but not too much. And, and here I said, keep calm and don't react using tone. So sometimes journalists may, you know, provoke you or say something you disagree with. Don't raise your voice and start getting angry, but just reply back to them in that same tone. So an example would be, I absolutely disagree with what you're saying, Kay. That's absolutely wrong. And I reject your assertion. I've, you know I mean, I've stayed the same and I've just told her she's a liar. So just keep it absolutely the same, but just use your words to challenge a journalist, but don't, you know, I mean, get angry or, or, or start, you know, raising your voice. And emotions, try to be composed when doing an interview and, and make sure your emotions reflect the wider context. So if you're being interviewed outside a burning building, for example, there's no reason for you to be smiling. But if you had just won an award, you, you know, I mean, beat some fundraising target and this and that, this is a, that's a moment of, of joy and celebration. So, of course, you can smile. So just let your, your emotions, you know, I mean, reflect the, the wider context and, 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 and what's happening around you. And my final slide is do's and don'ts. Please do practice, practice and practice. You can never be over rehearsed for an interview, my honest opinion. And do stick to what you need to talk about. Journalists will love to maybe take you off into, into tangents and things like that and keep your personal opinions to yourself. So an example of this was I was, I had a, I was given 15 minutes notice to come onto the BBC to discuss whether Theresa May should, be, should, should resign or, or, or and after the, she, she suffered the biggest defeat in recent modern history in Parliament. Um, and my key message was what? The problem with Brexit is not Theresa May. The problem with Brexit is Brexit itself, and it cannot be delivered on the terms in which it was promised. Do you see, go back to the quote, what did I say to you? Who's got questions for my answers? I knew exactly what I was going to say when that phone call came in. I'm here to talk about Brexit. I'm not here to talk about Theresa May, Chimale, and this and that. I'm here to give you my key messages. And more so than that, and I'll give you an example. I'm going to use Somali academics, so they've had the, the, they, they were nice enough to invite me here. If you're being interviewed about Somali academics, you have no reason to start talking about whether Somalia should become independent, whether this happens, that. Your personal opinions are absolutely irrelevant. You're there to talk about an initiative. Don't distract from that. And I'll give you an example. Once you do go down that, if I did say, yes, Theresa May deserves to be sagged, then someone, the journalist may turn around and say, well, that's unfortunate. She's the only second, second only ever female prime minister. So can you suggest another female cabinet member who should become prime minister? Or do you want men running the country again? The problem is when you've gone down that rabbit hole, it's very hard to come back out of it. So when you see a journalist trying to go on a tangent, bring them back to what you want to talk about. You, are, I've not mentioned it here, but you are always in control of that interview. So say what you want to say and take someone with you to an interview or record the interview yourself. Two reasons. It's really good to listen back to what you said and learn. Well, it's a very good learning, uh, learning opportunity and you can then be better for the next time. But secondly, uh, you know what I mean? People may take, take some of your words out of, sorry, out of context and misconstrue what you're trying to say. So you have a record of what you did say. So you can then go back and say, actually, you've just taken a small snippet of what I said. Whereas the wider recording shows that that's not actually not what I meant. So that's why it's always good to re um, record the interview. Don't, please don't ever assume that you're off the, off the record or the cameras or microphone are off. You are always live. And there are two examples I'll use. There was one more recent, there was one about a decade ago. Most recently, during Ramadan, and in the UK, we have a TV channel called British Muslim TV. And I can't, for legal reasons, say anything about them. But, um, but subhanAllah, there were two charity fundraisers who um, felt like the cameras were off. So they were donated, they were fundraising during the month of Ramadan. And they felt the cameras were off. So they decided to get engaged in sexist and misogynistic comments about Muslim sisters. Because they thought the cameras were off. So they were just chatting amongst themselves. Unfortunately, that clip was leaked. The charity has broken all ties with them. The TV station has broken all ties with them. And subhanAllah, do you know what I mean? That's just because they thought cameras and, 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 and the microphones were off. So always assume you're live. 
Another example was Gordon Brown in 2010 during the general election. A woman came up to him and said, you know, I've got concerns around immigration and this and that. He got back into his car. He still had his microphone on, on, on and clipped to his, um, to his blazer and he called the woman a bigot. So subhanAllah, I mean, the media picked up on that. And I know the person, it's a close friend of mine, who had to go back and knock on that woman's door and say, sorry, can I come in? Gordon Brown's called you a bigot and he wants to turn around and apologize to you. So please always assume, well, I like, if anyone's seen the BBC, I know, like just don't, until you're clear of the area that they can't even pick you up, then please, hadakini alaliya, then look after what you're saying. And sorry, last two points is don't say no comment. You know what I mean? If you don't know an answer to something or you don't want to say, it's far better to say you look into it and get back to them. So for example now is if a CEO goes on to TV or radio and says, oh, by the way, how many black employees do you have? And he says, no comment. That is very suspicious. Like, what do you mean no comment? But you can just say, oh, sorry, I don't have those figures to hand and I'm happy to look into it and get back to you. And well, that's a perfectly reasonable um, and sort of answer. So avoid no comment. No comment looks like, despite what the lo lo some lawyers may tell you, it always looks very suspicious. So just avoid no comment. And finally, don't say more than you need to say. You're there to deliver a message, guys. So there's this urge to feel dead air. So when you start, start speaking and then you stop, there's this two or three seconds that feels like a lifetime for some reason that is just empty air. And then people then feel like, oh, I need to say more. And then they start waffling. When you start waffling, you start making mistakes. Don't. Say what you said. Come with your key message. You're supporting, remember the support and stuff, whether you're dropping sound bites, stats, and this and that. And then stop and wait for the journalist to come up with a follow-up question or to say thank you very much for that interview. So that's what you need to do. But don't feel like you, there's an urge to feel dead air and things like that. that if, go quiet and then wait and then they will come back to you. And I think that's the end of kind of my session today. <laughs>